In this video, I'm going to tell you how to get the best pictures of your miniatures out of your smartphone. So the iPhone specifically is about 10 years old, roughly at this point. There were smartphones before. Uh, I had one for work. It was, I think, an HTC, and it had a keyboard that slid out, and it ran on Windows, and it looked like a tiny little Windows PC, like there was a start button and you used a stylus, and it was, it was weird. Anyway, um, it didn't have... I don't remember it having a camera. It may have had one, but if it did, it was so lousy that I never bothered to use it. Fast forward to today, and these babies, whether it's iPhone, Android, made by whoever, they generally have some pretty astounding cameras in this tiny little package. They may be great cameras, but they can be, let's say, less than great sometimes. You can put them into a situation which allows them to not necessarily shine with the technological brilliance that they technically should. And I see it a lot when I go to different groups on the internet, when I go to places where people are showing off pictures of their models. Um, I see it on the Tabletop Minions Paint Showcase Club on Facebook. I see it on tons of different groups on Facebook. And on, it's, it, to be perfectly honest, it's mostly Facebook. The people that I see who post cool pictures generally on, like, say, Instagram and places like that of their models have a tendency to do it in a different way. And they maybe use some of these techniques or maybe they just go completely you know, the other direction and use a big fancy camera. But you don't need to. You don't need to use a big fancy camera to take a good picture of your models so that you can show your friends or people on the internet who might also be your friends. Now, a disclaimer. Will you get a better effect if you spend two to $5,000 on a really fancy camera with a really fancy lens and you get some really fancy lighting and go through all that rigmarole, can you get some amazing looking images of your models? Well, uh, yeah, duh, you can. But it's not a necessity in this day and age. You don't need a fancy camera to get at least decent pictures or at the very least better pictures than you might be taking now of your miniatures. These cameras these days are designed to focus closer. They're designed to get closer to the subject than many point-and-shoot cameras that used to cost two, three hundred dollars even five years ago uh, were, were able to. They're able to work in lower lighting, which is also super important because you don't want to use that flash. And I'm going to get back to that in a little bit. The fact of the matter is, is that when you want to shoot your models, whether it's a work in progress or a finished thing, because you want to show people online, let's say, there are ways to do it, and there are tricks you can do with the current phone that you probably already have to make it look as good as it possibly can look. Now, as I mentioned, flash. Here's your first pro tip for this whole entire video. Go and find the flash setting in your smartphone or whatever, Android, iOS, whatever you got, and turn it off. Don't put it on auto. Don't put it on, well, maybe some of the time. Don't go, well, if it's really, just turn it off. I would tell you to put a piece of tape over it so that you never have to use it again, but this little tiny light I don't use as a flash. I use it as a flashlight so I don't step on cats in the middle of the night when I'm walking around in the dark or whatever. So, uh, you know, the, flat, the, 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 the thing on there is useful, but it's an absolute nightmare for trying to take a picture of a miniature. Here's a picture that I took uh, of one of my finished miniatures, and I turned the flash on, forced it to go. It hurt me psychically to do so, and you can see here why. It's it's not a good look. Everything is kind of washed out. Um, it's shiny, like there's a reflective glare on stuff. It's just not great. It doesn't work out well. All you really need to do is to just go find yourself a window. You don't need fancy lights. You don't need... Uh, expensive LED, you know, lamps or anything like that, just go find yourself a window. Preferably the sun's not beating in through the window. Preferably you're on like the north side of the house where there's no direct light coming in or it's a cloudy day. One of those two things because you want the light source but you don't want the overbright, really super harsh light source. Get yourself over by the window, turn off that flash and take these types of pictures instead. It looks a lot better. It's a very big difference to go from shooting with the flash to shooting without and going over by a window. I'm just holding it, the, the model there, you know, in my between my fingers and my thumb. 
You don't have to get fancy even, but it will look better and be a better representation of what you're trying to show people or even just what you're trying to show yourself when you decide to turn off that flash. Turning off the flash is probably the biggest tip I can give you if you're going to be using your smartphone. Turn off the flash. If you're going to be using a point-and-shoot camera or something, turn that flash off too. If, if you find someone else's, if you're over at someone else's house and they've got a, just turn off their flash. Turn off every flash you ever find. They're just, it just don't help in anything in photography and the sensors that we have in these cameras, that are in these tiny little phones, these days are actually pretty good in low light. They don't need that much light. Turn off your flash. Most of these cameras at this point now can focus pretty close. Now you can't get zoomed way in on just a specific small part of a you know, let's say normal 28 millimeter size model. You can't like zoom in just on the head and get a good, really super great shot with with a phone. It's just not gonna work yet. Now, that being said, there are companies that make little external lenses that you sort of snap on, they kind of clamp over the top corner. And then those have got macro, they've got telephoto, there's a bunch of those. If you wanna, you know, go for that kind of money, you can do it. You're gonna get generally kind of fuzzy sort of focus around the edges. Like in the middle will be nice and sharp generally, and that's cool, but everything else will start to get sort of dreamy and weird out towards the edges. So even the expensive ones where you're spending 90 to $150, eh, the macro lens feature is not going to be super great if you're just trying to focus on how good of a paint job you did on the guy's hand as he holds the ax. It's not as easy. But if you just want to show the overall model, even at 28 millimeter scale, most of the phones that you can get these days, or the ones that have been even around for the last couple of years, will focus close enough to do well enough. Secondly, if you can't focus close enough, you can always crop in a little bit once you've taken the shot. That'll also help. You don't have to be perfect in the shot. Cropping is always an option, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you've probably seen a pretty old video where I made myself a light box for model photography, for being able to, you know, put a model into a box and then light it from both sides and above. And then, you know, there's tissue paper and it's cardboard and duct tape and a whole bunch of stuff. But it makes a nice little area, a little studio for you to be able to get a nice image that's well lit of your model, and that'll work pretty well. If you haven't seen that video, pachow. Uh, like I said, it's one of the older ones. But, and that's great, and it's something you can do with stuff you have around the house, you don't have to go even that far in some situations to take some shots uh, of your models. Here's some shots that I did uh, earlier today, and um, you look at it and go, okay, well, <clears throat> that's in a nice area there. You got the nice curvature uh, of, you know, there's no corner where the wall ends and the, the floor starts. You can, it's just a nice white background. It's been all knocked out in Photoshop or whatever. And actually it wasn't knocked out in Photoshop and it wasn't in a fancy light box. Uh, I took a piece of typing paper, well, copier paper, whatever, you know, and uh, I taped it to a box a a on the windowsill there and took a shot. And that's, you can see it here. That's how I did it. It's, you can see the result and you can see how I did it. It's really quite simple. It was a piece of paper, a piece of tape, a cardboard box. You could put whatever you wanted there. You could tape it to, well, I was gonna say you could tape it to your cat, but that's not really nice. And the cat's gonna move most likely, but you could tape it to something that's not gonna move, um, you know, a potted plant, whatever. And then you just have to position the camera right and take a shot. And then you might have to crop it a little bit in some software, um, but you know you don't have to have Photoshop to do that. You can do it in the software that uh, you can get on your phone these days, basically for free. There is pretty much never a time that I put any picture up on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, or any other place that I haven't edited it a little bit, even just a touch in different pieces of software on my phone. Um, I have a lot of different pieces of software that I like to use. Uh, one of my favorites is called Snapseed, and it's made, I think, by Google, and it's free. Uh, it has a lot of features for being able to go in and change white balance and change exposure and change um, highlights, shadows, um, a lot of different things. There's tons of different features in Snapseed, and again, free app. Um, there's also, let's see here, Mextures, 
What else do I like to use? Uh, Enlight, uh, Kenai. I'll post all these down below in the description. You can get some of these only on one platform, but most of them are, are for both, you know, Android or iOS. They allow you to crop. They allow you to tweak your colors. Now, the trick is, is about with miniatures, if you're trying to show somebody what a miniature looks like and you tweak it to the point where it doesn't really look like the miniature anymore, that's kind of a cheating a little bit if you're like, look how fancy my paint job is when it wasn't really actually that fancy. But the other thing is, is it's also just not a good representation. So if you're trying to get, you know, constructive criticism about a work in progress, but you have sort of uh, polished up that pig before you've shown it to somebody, you're not going to get a good response back. You're not going to get necessarily the, well, maybe you should try doing this if you made it look awesome in post. You see what I'm saying? So use those those pieces of software, put them on your phone, use them so you can crop, use them so you can kind of zoom in. You know, if you took the picture and it's maybe a little crooked, you want to straighten it out, that's fine. Um, maybe, you, you know, the, the shot that you got is a little bit, eh, it's not quite to the right exposure and you could maybe lighten it up or darken it, but don't get crazy and make it, you know, super saturated and this and that and the other thing, because it won't be a great representation of the model. You know, if, if someone sees this picture and you're like, oh, that's really awesome, you know, your friends, and then they come to the local store to play against you and now they see that model in person, they're going to be like, well, that doesn't, I don't remember him looking like, that's not what he looked like last time I saw him. And so, you know, don't. Don't really fib that much if you can in the software, but it is very useful. Lastly, and this is maybe one of the more important things, um, every phone has got a different type of camera app, but most of them all have something in common. The way that you take a picture of a, a model, that you're trying to take something really close, you get your camera set down in there. And if you've got one of those little kind of clampy tripods, that's awesome, but you don't need it. You can just set the camera on something. In this setup, uh, you know, I set the camera on a, on a, a tape dispenser, you know, and just sort of like, sort of balanced it and then took the shot so I wasn't, you know, down on the ground, but I also wasn't holding it and shaking in my hand or whatever. So find something to kind of help to steady the camera a little bit. But the trick is, is that on, on, on the iPhone, you tap on the screen where you want to focus. So if you've got your model and it's maybe a little offside, you know, it's going to be try to focus in the middle. So it's trying to focus on the white background or whatever you're doing. You might want to tap and say, no, focus over here. Depending on the model, you may want to focus on the face. If it's got like an arm, that's way out here. You see that arm? See how it's like kind of out of focus? If I tapped here, then this would be in focus and my face would be out. But you don't want that. You want the face maybe if that's what you're trying to go for. So you tap on the thing that you actually want to be in focus. Pretty much every app, whether it's Android or iOS, has got tap to focus. That's important. But the next thing too, is that once you've tapped, you can also usually change the exposure before you take the shot. In iOS, you basically touch anywhere other than the place you tapped. When you tap someplace, it makes a little yellowish kind of box and says, this is the focal point. But then you can slide your finger up or down to make it get darker or, or, or lighter, or actually probably lighter or darker is probably how it works. With Android, it's the same type of thing, except you don't just, you know, touch anywhere to slide the lighter up and down. It's over on the side. And different phones do it different ways. So figure out how your phone does it, because almost every phone is going to give you the option to be able to change the exposure based off of, uh, you know, some sort of slider type thing. And that can really help it so that you don't have too dark of a photo. You know, if you're putting it in front of a white background, very frequently that white background can overpower the sensor and make the thing think that everything's a lot lighter than it is. And then your model becomes a silhouette and the light background is perfectly you know, exposed, you got the entire gradient of from like real light down to dark. You actually want that white background to just be white. So when you poke for focus and then you slide your finger, raise the exposure some, that background will start to get blown out, but that's okay. You kind of want that because you want the exposure to be better in the shadows and stuff like that on your model. So change the exposure before you take the shot and you're going to be a lot happier with your photos. So in conclusion, turn off your flash, turn off your flash, turn off your flash. Don't use it. It's garbage. It does nothing but ruin pictures, especially of miniatures. Like a flash picture of like a baby is horrible as well. And you know, your friends even probably not so great. But if you take a flash picture with your model sitting there and you're trying to get a good kind of representation of what it looks like, you'll never be happy. Believe me. So don't use the flash. 
on your smartphone camera. Instead, kind of set yourself up, get yourself near a window. Um, you want it to be on kind of one side. If it's in a perfect situation, you want to actually have the window a little bit to your back, maybe, so the light's hitting it. It depends on how you can do it. You know, you know your house better than I do, as far as you know. Uh, but just go through that direction and get yourself a nice kind of cloudy day uh, or get on the side of the house that the sun doesn't come in the window, even though it's still like a nice bright day, and you're going to get a good light that's really going to give you uh, a good exposure. And like I said, use the exposure slider in your phone to up it a little bit if you've got it on a white background or, you know, you'll, you'll be able to just tell by looking at the screen whether the model itself is too dark. You don't care about the background. If you're holding it up and taking a shot, you want the background to be generally dark, so you kind of work off of that. If you're shooting on a white background because you've made yourself a little, it's called a cyclotron in uh, photo terms, by the way. If you use a piece of typing paper to make yourself a little cyclotron with a piece of tape, then you want that to be really light. So expose properly, use the slider, and lastly, Grab yourself some free editing software and kind of just tweak and maybe fix a little bit the image before you upload it to whatever social media or to Facebook or whatever you're going to do just because you want people to see it or maybe even give you some tips. Give them a good photo to choose from, to look at, and to understand, and you're going to get better results. And when your model's done, a better picture is going to make you and everybody else who sees it even happier.